everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and we're back to our solar panel testing bed. If you remember a few weeks ago, I did a test on um, the difference between hooking up in parallel and series, and whether you use multiple, char uh, multiple solar panels into a single charge controller, or it's better to hook individual panels up into individual charge controllers. So if you saw that video, um, great. If you didn't, I'll put a link to it right up in this particular corner. You can check that out. In that video, if you recall, we have a battery. We have two test solar panels, which are just outside of the frame here. Um, we have a small shunt and battery monitoring system. And I did this, I bought, I bought a really cheap one uh, that measured one way just so I could see the input coming in. We had two really inexpensive charge controllers. I did all this on you know, cheap China built items just to do my test that's gonna sit right here. Uh, I have my wire joints. And then to be able to test my load, I also hooked up a small little dimmer switch and um, nav lights essentially for a boat. That just gave me a little bit of a sample so I could see what a general draw might be, right? Some, something to play around with. So that was the setup and it yielded us really good results. And in the end, the conclusion was uh, you actually do get better amp output over the term of the day if you have multiple charge controllers. Um, the thought being here, if you have shadowing across a portion of the panel, let's say your boom swings over one side, and while you're on a certain tack, you are uh, shading five or seven or eight percent of one of your solar panels, the other one still gets its full capacity, its full charge, and it's not hindered by the charge controller. That's the, uh, that was the test we did. You can check out all the results up in this corner. So in this week's video, we're going to hook up a two-way battery monitoring system. And what I mean by two-way is it not only measures all of the amperage coming in from external sources, whether that happens to be solar, wind, or uh, an electrical battery charger, it also man uh, measures all of the loads going out and gives you the net calculations along with the battery level, etc. The challenge with this small cheap one we did up front was it only measures one direction. So when you wire it into the shunt one direction, it will measure all the loads coming in, solar, wind, electrical um, chargers. It would do that just fine. But if you started to take a load on those, it would decrease it to zero and then start counting up again in a positive manner. It didn't go to negative. Um, if you actually flip the wires over and reverse it wired uh, 180 degrees off or, or opposite on the actual shunt, then it will measure the loads but not the input. This is the one that we want to ultimately see. And if you're familiar with like a Victron or, or a really good battery monitoring system for your boat, these are the features that this one has. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a really inexpensive one. It was about $40, um, maybe $50, I think, with shipping. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. I don't intend to put this on our, our big Formosa sailboat. This is not what I want when we ultimately live aboard. But um, it was great for this particular test. It's why I wanted to get it. And worst case scenario, I will reuse this in our camper or one of the other boats or something, right? So it'll get used. I also want to take just a minute and welcome the 59 new subscribers we had in the last week. Thank you so much for joining. I don't know if you joined because of the uh, sailboat and liveaboard refit sailboat kind of videos that we do every Friday or the grilling videos we do on Tuesday because boy, they're sure to our two opposite topics. But welcome aboard. We love having you here. If you find this really helpful, do us a favor, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little bell. The bell will tell you when we upload a new video. And then you can decide whether or not you wanna watch it or you don't. If you enjoy it or you don't, but at least you get notified of when they're there. So we'd certainly appreciate you doing that as well. All right, let's get to playing with this monitor. So I order electronics from China, especially when I'm just playing around and testing stuff. And they're always, um, they're always fun to read the English version. This is the battery capacity monitor. Um, and as you can see, it's just a very small round unit here. It's not very large at all. Um, we have our shunt which is a little bit more sophisticated than the shunt in the last video. If you recall, in this shunt, all we're looking at is uh, the negative battery goes on each side of the shunt, and then you have two monitoring cables. Um, this is similar in that my negative will go on either side of this. However, my battery monitoring now has a plug, and it plugs into it, and there are six different leads that come off of it. So, uh, and there is actually a very small printed circuit board on here as well. And I suspect that is because um, it has the logic built into this for the connection. 
So I'll put a link for this thing down below. As I mentioned, I would not use this on, um, you know, on a, on a full-time cruising boat where monitoring the batteries are unbelievably critical to what you have to do every day as you're living on the boat. Uh, for us, I might use it on our little power boat, or I might use it on a boat that I'm not living on, um, and I would certainly use it in the camper. I think those are perfectly fine applications. Okay, the first step is really as simple as just getting the negative cables wired in. And it's important to note, they will be labeled because there is a proper direction on a shunt. Um, so one of these goes to the battery, the other goes to essentially the load and the input. So let's go ahead and get this thing screwed on here. So as we can see here, there is a B side for the battery and a P for load. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the battery side for a moment here. And you'll notice that there are a nut, a lock washer, and a flat washer. Uh, because I'm just doing a test, I don't even have these crimped on. These are just, you know, bent wire terminals. And as long as they're not touching anything for my bench test here, this is more than sufficient. So I'm putting that on first, then I'm putting the flat washer on, then the lock washer, and then my actual nut. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the load side. And to make this bench test really easy, I have just my little terminal strip set up here. So this is going to my overall negative load. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my old battery monitoring power cable here because I know I'm gonna to have to put one on the new setup. Let's just get my old shunt right out of the way. I have a small little wiring uh, pin in here and I want this to go into one of these B pluses. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this very small, ooh, so small this screwdriver barely fit. Falls into the category where there's a will, there's a way. We now have our cable connected. This red wire must go to the positive from the battery, which I have connected right here, along with my load for my lights. And again, test setup. So in a boat, you'd never use a wire nut. I think everybody knows that. We do have to use the extended cable here, mainly just because the, both of these connections are female and both of these are male. So you have to use it even if you're gonna shorten it up. That's all right. Put one end in there. The other end, right in here. And as you can see, we have our battery monitor charging up or turning on. Okay, so I've tightened up both of the negative cables on the shunt um, just off camera here. You saw we connected up the actual um, monitoring itself, the little monitor. And now it's just a matter of, um, well, reading through the instructions to see exactly how to do this as a first step. But we'll get this thing all set up. All right, the first thing we have to do is set the capacity of the battery bank. And in this case, I just have a 35 amp hour battery. This is something we use for the solar lights we keep under the dock. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press and hold my set button for three seconds. There we go. We are now in the capacity setting and we're gonna go ahead and drop this. The default is 100 hours. So we're just gonna go ahead and go bring this down to 35. And we hit the set button when that's done. When you first get the battery monitor, you have to tell it your amp hour capacity of your battery bank. You also have to tell it your current state of charge. It doesn't know if it's, you know, 5% charged or 100% charged. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either discharge your battery fully and set it at, at empty, or you can charge it fully and set it at 100%. I'm going to charge the, I'm going to choose the 100% one. So I'm sitting here fully charged. I've been on the solar charge controller now for uh, a week with no load on it. Uh, the battery's fully charged. I'm looking at 12.7, 12.6 readings on each of the solar charge controllers. I'm getting 12.76 on this itself. So all I wanna do is move this over to the, um, the percentage, and then I'm gonna press and hold the percentage button. And you'll notice it pops up to 100%. I've just set the device and told it that I am now at 100%. So I have not only told it the capacity of the battery, I told it um, that it's currently at 100%. So now that it knows that this is a 35 amp hour battery and it's fully charged, as loads come off of this battery, it's gonna do the math continuously and show me exactly what the current um, level of uh, state of charge is. And I said state of charge, that's probably not what I should describe. Think of it more like a fuel gauge for your batteries. And I can see here I'm at 100%. Uh, the nice thing is you can really look at these and, and set them in the way you want. For example, using a flooded lead acid battery, you wouldn't want to go below 50%, right? We know that based on what we know about flooded lead acid batteries. With lithium, you could go all the way down to 15% or so. Uh, just depends on the, the manufacturer specifications for your battery. So let's take a look at the unit in operation. As it's sitting here right now, I am on the solar charge controllers. I have a small amount of... Um, amperage coming in from the chargers, very small amount. 
Uh, on the main menu, it shows what I have coming in. So I'm sitting at, uh, at 0.54 amps, so half an amp coming in right now. If I want to see voltage, I click on the volt button and I can see that the batteries are at 12.78 volts. If I um, go to the percentage, it shows me what the overall percentage is. If I come back to my amps, I have a couple of different settings here. It shows me my total amp hours. Uh, at full capacity right now, I'm at 35 amps. As this were to drain, this would be uh, in correlation with the, the digital readout of the battery. It also shows me again what my amperage input is. So what I wanna do right here is, um, I'm gonna turn on my navigation lights that I have in my setup here. So we have 0.5 coming in. As I turn these on, we're gonna start to notice that my amperage is going down. I have them on dim and you can see I'm essentially getting down there. We now see the negative and what we can see is I am drawing 0.1 amp out of my battery bank more than is coming in right now based on the curtain and the shadow. So this is really a good thing, right? At any point in time, I can see whether I am net positive or net negative. So I'm just gonna leave this sit like this for a while, let it run. Uh, I wanna see the batteries discharge. I wanna check out how well the, uh, the, the monitor, the meter shows my actual usage. So I was doing the math and realizing that that's gonna take way, way too long. So um, I just wired in a, another set of whole, a whole strip of LED strip lights. I just happen to have some here. So I just grabbed those. I wired them in with these navigation lights. It's just sitting on the floor in a housing. Um, but that way, while I let this discharge to show you the results of how the meter works, uh, it won't take you know 10% all the way until tomorrow, given the very low amperage. So my battery just died in the GoPro. So I'm holding my cell phone filming this. So I'm gonna continue to turn the brightness up. I'm only at about 5% brightness on the LEDs. So as I, as I scroll up with the LEDs, you'll notice my amp draw certainly gets higher, as you would imagine. So I've turned them up all the way. They're drawing almost an amp, just short of one amp of, of juice. That's one amp hour. Um, so if I think about that, if I come back in 12 hours, I will have drawn 12 amp hours on a 35 amp hour battery. I should be down about a third. So we'll take a look and we'll see if that works and holds true. Uh, that could fluctuate a little bit depending on what we see from uh, the sun here in these panels that are sitting inside. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's been cloudy, so not a whole lot coming into them. So let's take a look. We'll monitor this and show you how it works and how it can help you on your RV, camper, or whatever it is. So it's now about seven and a half to eight hours later. We were doing filming around 8 a.m. this morning. It is now 4.50 p.m. So let's call that a little bit more than eight hours. So if we think about what we've been running, if you remember earlier, uh, I mentioned that we were drawing 0.9 something amps out of the battery. So if we do the math, let's just round that to one amp. If we were doing one amp for about eight hours, we would have drained eight amp hours out of our 35 amp hour battery putting us somewhere at about 30 or 27 amps should be left in our, in our actual um, battery here, 27 amp hours. So if I click on our device here, um, it's kind of neat. If I, um, it, it shows I'm maybe three quarters uh, of, of the fuel cell indicator, if you will, on the battery life. And if I actually click on the amp hour button, I, I can see exactly what I'm at. So I'm at 27.49 uh, amp hours on the particular battery. So that's sort of right on, like it seems to make some sense. Um, I also, I did not wanna have the variable of the sun going in and out of the clouds and maybe overcharging into our system, given such a low draw here. So I did pull a curtain over the front of the, uh, of the solar panel so it would not actually have an input coming into this. Yeah, so we're sitting at 27.48 amp hours. Uh, we're still consistently pulling out 0.955 amp hours. That's with our three navigation lights and the row of LED strip lights that I have below. And that would kind of be equivalent to what you might have on an overnight passage with your navigation lights on and a couple of cabin lights, if you will. Obviously you would have more than that, um, especially if you start talking autopilot and things like that, you'd be pulling significantly more out of here. But I also would be, you know, if we're talking about the boat, I would have a six to 800 amp hour battery bank versus 35. Um, couple other settings I can go to here. I can actually click on the voltage and I can see what the actual voltage is on the meter itself. And that's at 
And the other thing we can do is if we click on the percentage indicator, you sort of get the visual indicator of the, of the fuel cell, right? The battery graphical display of how full it is. But it also shows me that I'm at a 78.5% um, charge capacity, right? That's what I have left in the batteries. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and it's earned your subscription, by all means, please click this little subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of any new content. And we'll see you all next Friday in another video all about DIY, sailboat, liveaboard, and lifestyle. Bye, y'all. Safe sailing. Oh, I got to share this. I might have told a few people. So Father's Day this year, my daughter, who, who's grown, uh, sent me this. It says, Dear Bonus, so she's my stepdaughter. Um, well, Deb and I got married when she was five, so we were dating for several years before that, but it says, Dear Bonus Dad, Happy Father's Day from the kid you inadvertently inherited when you decided to shack up with my mom. <laughs> love Whitney. I thought that was so cute. Uh, I, I enjoy it. It gives me a smile every day I have my coffee in it.